so for everybody who's here, welcome. My name is Andrew Stippers. I'm here with Hank Preston. We're here from uh, Sunset Learning and Cisco respectively to talk about renewing Cisco certifications. That's a pretty popular topic lately. We wanna make sure everyone's on the same page. Everyone has the tools they need to talk about, uh, to know what to do and uh, how it's gonna work. Uh, as we're getting started here, we're going to launch a quick poll in the meeting. So I see a little pop up of some questions show up here. So let's take a moment, go ahead and answer those poll questions, start to gather some info about where folks are at, you know, what kind of what knowledge you already have about your certs, um, anything we want to ad address here. So let's go ahead and answer those poll questions real quick. Uh, here, we'll close that out. And we'll share some results out. So what we can see is that uh, there's a couple folks who don't have any certification. We're gonna talk a little bit about that. Um, but most of us here have certs and we got a couple certs that are expiring, expiring in the near future, a couple so certs are gonna be expiring a little further out. Uh, and most folks are interested in continuing to get more certs. And so that's uh, the renewing those is uh, pretty popular. We want to make sure we are up to date with you know latest and greatest info. So that's awesome. Thank you for that information. We're gonna we're gonna talk about some of that today. So let me close that poll out there. So let's let me pass the ball over to Hank. I, I'm gonna stop sharing, and uh, Hank was gonna Hank if you want to introduce yourself um, and talk a little bit about Cisco certs and uh, some of the info around them. Sure. Sure. So I, I'm good. Awesome. All right. So thanks for uh, having me uh, join you today, Andrew, and the, the folks from Sunset here. Uh, so my name is Hank Preston. I'm a principal engineer with learning and certifications, and I do a lot of different things inside of Cisco as part of our learning and certifications team. Um, I actively work with some of our certification roadmaps, trying to determine which uh, what updates have to happen on blueprints that are out there, uh, both updates as well as new certifications that come out. I work a lot on our automation certifications and training. So one of the, the most recent uh, additions to our expert level of certifications was the Cisco Certified DevNet Expert. I led the team that built that program, uh, the exam, the lab exam, the blueprint, and kind of launched that through there, um, which was really special for me because I got into kind of the learning and education space inside of Cisco completely around network automation. So watching network automation go from just some interesting thing that nobody was really sure whether automation made sense for the network engineers all the way to having an expert level certification has been a fantastic journey to be on. And then I also work internally on our team that manages and builds the data centers um, that host all of the Cisco learning labs. And so if you've taken a class on CCNA or on a, a data center topic and you've taken and you've used the labs from inside of the, the Cisco learning classes, led maybe by Andrew or one of the other instructors, um, those systems are actually built and maintained by our team inside. So lots of different things all related to the certifications. I also enjoy being certified myself. I, I got my first CCNA, man, I don't know, 20 years ago, um, and then kind of somewhat related for the conversation today. That first time I got it, it eventually lapsed as I wasn't kind of focusing on networking for a bit for a part of my career. And then I went back and re-earned my CCNA. And on that time, I kind of followed it all the way up through the expert level certifications. Um, and so earning certifications, maintaining them, kind of constantly learning new things, really, really interesting to me as it goes through. And I encourage all of the engineers on our team to, to do the same. So we not only kind of help teach the material and provide the issues that are there, we're also students learning right alongside each one of you that's out there. So I'm happy to be here and help kind of talk about the recertification changes that are out there. Um, it, cause it has changed a lot, right. With the, uh, with the advent of the pieces that are there, I know we're going to go into continuing education options and all of those pieces kind of during the webinar today. So I'm excited to help everybody understand what your recertification options are. So I'm going to share my screen out here. Um, before I do that in the meeting chat, let me message everyone here. I've got a couple websites, a couple links I'm going to send you and I'm intentionally sending you uh, these links because I want you to have the same resources uh, that I have. These are the Cisco websites where we're gonna learn about continuing education. So here's the one for uh, info about their continuing education program. 
And then you get this other one here. And the other one, I'll just type it in here, is the ce.cisco.com. So let's, I'm gonna share my screen out if you wanna follow along on your side or just watch the screen share, whatever works for you. But let's talk about how the new, how the program works now. How, what's the new way this works? So first off, this all changed back in February of 2020, where now we can use continuing education for any Cisco cert. It used to be just CCIEs, and that's great, but now, now we can do CCNA, specialist, just any Cisco cert we can renew by taking training. So on this site, the first link I sent out, it details uh, how that works. And I would wanna emphasize right up front the, you don't have to do just continuing education, especially for anyone with any professional certs or CCIEs. You can actually do a combo of continuing education and exams. So for associate level certs, the new option is to you get 30 continuing education credits. I'm gonna talk about how many points different courses are worth in a second. Uh, but you need 30 credits for an associate level cert, so CCNA, DevNet, CCNA, uh, or sorry, associate DevNet. Uh, specialist certs are 40 credits, professional are 80. But when you hit professional and CCI, you can also do a combo. You can do 40 credits and a professional level exam, or if you have anyone has a CCIE, you can do 40 credits and two exams or 80 credits in one exam. So if you are taking training, but you've also got other certs you are working towards, the act of passing those other exams and doing training, that can be enough to renew your existing certs. It doesn't have to be just continuing education credits or just passing exams, you can do both at the same time, all right? <clears throat> so we've got our credit value or credits and exams. And by the way, the old, the, the classic style of renewing your certifications by just taking exams at the same or a higher level. If you wanna go retake CCNA, you can still do that. There's nothing wrong with that. Most folks just prefer to take higher level or different, you know, more advanced exams as they continue to progress on their learning journey. But if you want to take the same exams again, or you want to take uh, exams at the same level, you can absolutely still do that. So that's the first site. Um, and I will, they tell you about the process here where uh, I'm going to take you over to the continuing education site here in a second. But <clears throat> I do want to uh, stress just a couple things here. You do have to submit your claim for continuing education within 365 days of taking the training or whatever the, the event that you are uh, getting credits for. There's other things besides training like presenting at Cisco Live you can get credits for. Um, most folks here were, were taking training to get the credits. Uh, and I, I like to emphasize this, the 365 days, because it used to be a 90-day window. So they've opened that up. So there's a little more leeway for taking, getting your credits for training you've taken previously. Um, but then once the credits are associated to your account, it automatically will update your service. So let's go over to that second website that I was pointing out there. Uh, let me check my chat here. See a couple messages there. Get an answer, excellent, cool. So the second website here, is this ce.cisco.com, continuing education at cisco.com. So let me walk you through why this is an awesome little website and how it's gonna help you. So you log in, so if we're looking at me here, uh, you can see I've got a couple certifications. Uh, as an instructor, I have to hold the certs to teach the certs. So I've got a, a couple certs <laughs> that, I, that I deal with. Um, and actually, uh, it's kind of great because it tells you which certs you've got, what level they're at, when they were last extended, how long they're good till, how many days. So that gives you an idea of which certs should you worry about, which certs are gonna expire soon, and should you, you know, if you wanna keep them, should you work on continuing education? So you might notice I recently, just last week, went and updated all these certs. Um, I see that raised hand. If there's a question, if you wanna throw that in the question in the chat, um, we've got some folks monitoring the chat with questions. And we're also gonna have a Q&A at the end as well. So we, we will circle back for any questions at the end as well. 
Um, <clears throat> so I recently just went through and got my continuing education, update all my certs, but let's talk about the, the process here. So first off, or second off, I should say, uh, how many points are courses worth? You can see that on the learning locator when you're looking up different courses, CCNA, EN Core, Security Core. When you're looking at the course descriptions, there'll be a points value. It'll tell you how many continuing education points that course is worth. The other option is on this site under the item catalog. Under the item catalog, you can search for courses and see how many points are they worth. So if we say CCNA, we all love CCNA. There's a, it'll show you a couple different versions of CCNA because uh, you can take it from Cisco, from the uh, do ILT, do digital, take it in Japanese. Uh, <laughs> but across the board, these are all worth 30 credits. Okay, so that's a 30 credit course. I, I want to warn you some courses are worth more or less points so if we go take a oh what's a what's a bigger course we say en core there are our enterprise core course there we go that's worth 64 credits so just watch out for that um some credit some courses are worth 30 some courses are worth 40 uh and then some core courses are worth 64 uh, and then you'll also find some of the two and three day training classes are worth 16 or 20 credits. So just watch out for that. I don't want you to take training, get credits, and not have enough credits to re renew all your certs. All right. So we'll look up in our catalog what courses exist, how many credits are they worth, but how do you actually get the credits? All right. And I, I love stressing this because I've had a number of students in class, they, they took the training, they did the end of week survey, and then their certs expired because they didn't do this last step. They didn't actually get their credits. So on this site, at ce.cisco.com, under the submit items tab, you're gonna plug in the info for the training you took. So let's say we took EN Core. All right, we'll go with that one. And we'll say we took the, the latest 1.3. You're gonna select that del delivery type or uh, this, this is Cisco U. So we'll go back to 1.2 where that's still being done by the learning partners. There we go. So 1.2 is you can get that from Cisco Direct. We'll do instructor led training. Maybe you came to Sunset Learning, maybe someone else. And you'll select that provider from the list. So these are all of our Cisco learning partners. So we'll roll down here and we'll say, we'll just assume uh, probably took it with, from Sunset Learning. And then you'll plug in the start and the end date. Now I'm not gonna hit submit here because obviously I didn't actually take training on this date, but you would hit submit on your side. And now it will take several days to process, all right? It's not automatic because uh, to prevent abuse and to double check that the training actually occurred, Cisco is gonna double check with that training partner to make sure that yes, you did actually take the training, then the credits get associated to your account. Now at that point, you're good to go. Let's go back to the dashboard here. Let's go back to the dashboard. And we can see like on mine, I've got my 64 credits for the training that I attended. And that's all I had to do. And then automatically my certs updated because uh, I had, I had a, an exam I took as well, plus these credits, that was enough to meet the threshold and renewed my certs. One of the other things I wanna mention here about this is, <clears throat> uh you don't have to get credits per certification you see how i've got my ccmp enterprise ccmp security ccna cyber ops associate if i had to do those individually that would be 80 credits 80 credits 40 credit uh 30 credits 30 credits that would be uh that'd be a bit much right so think of it as a general threshold when you reach the 30 credit threshold every cert at that level renews for three years. If I reach 40 credits, everything at that level and below renews for three years. So I reached my exam plus credits threshold. That was enough to have all my professional, if I go over to a page here, all my specialist certs, everything renew for three years. So you don't have to get credits per course. All right, don't worry about that. You can get multiple certs and multiple disciplines. 
as long as you reach that overall threshold, everything at that level and below renews for three years. Okay, and that's that's it. At that point, you've now you've attended the training, you put in your application for the credits. Once they do the verification, those apply to your account. Give it a couple more days, two, three more days for everything to process through the backend systems. And then on this site, you'll see your certs automatically renew for three years. So that's that's the process. Let me stop sharing my screen here. <clears throat> Let's go over to got some questions here. Excellent. Yes, uh, question, I see that from Lance there. I didn't mention that earlier. Um, the ce.cisco.com site, it's the continuing education.cisco.com. Uh, that is for the continuing education. So if you don't have any Cisco certs, your account won't let you log into it, which kind of makes sense because continuing education doesn't really matter if you don't have any active certifications. Um, I do get a question in class every now and then. Let me uh, just kind of jump ahead here. One of the Q&A questions that I want to just kind of address there uh, is um, uh, my CCNA expired. Uh, can I use continuing education to renew that? No, continuing education is to renew active certifications. Um, so if your certifications have lapsed, then at that point you will you'll have to take the exams again to reactivate to or to get not really reactivate to get the certs fresh <clears throat> okay so we've got a couple other we've got some good good questions in there okay um one of the other questions we've got here is if I have a DevNet professional cert, how many credits do I need to research? Let's go back to the, the first site, the, Dev, the DevNet professional we're looking at here. Let me share my screen out again. And so for a, not a specialist, but for a professional cert, you would need 80 credits or 40 credits and one professional level exam. Now when it says professional level, so that could be concentration that could be a core exam just anything at the professional level uh, when it gets to ccie they get a little more specific where they say if you want to do that combo style you have to do at least one core or two professional so two concentration exams but if it's just professional level any professional level exam plus 40 credits or just 80 credits either of those would be sufficient to renew your cert Okay. <clears throat> hey, hey, Andrew. Yes. Yeah, it's it's relevant to what you were just covering here. So there's a question that's in the Q and A panel from James. Can we still go the traditional route of taking a professional level course uh, from that cert path to renew? And so I think the idea here is if they have this the CCNP collaboration or CCNP route switch, can they still take? the course from that same path to renew, basically retake a course or a certification that's there. How does that work? Are, are people allowed yeah. to take a course that they potentially already have a cert for? Absolutely, so let me let me share my screen out again. It's all it's perfect, this is why we're here. So let's go back to my profile. I have my CCMP enterprise. And so to get that, you need the enterprise core and one concentration from the enterprise track. So if I go over here, I've got the enterprise core, I've also got the uh, advanced infrastructure and wireless. I've got a couple of those. So <laughs> the training I took was EN Core. The same course I already have passed the exam for, that counted. Absolutely, because courses update as well. So you might have a, a certification that you are renewing, but there's something new in the new version of the course that you want to attend. So yes, you can absolutely take the same course again that you've already attended, that you've already passed the exam for to get the continuing education. Yes. So there's, there's uh, another one, I'm, and I'm answering it as well in here, um, sure. in the chat, but it's worth covering. So some uh, Gon, Gonzala asked, is it too late to do 30 credits of continuing education if your CCNA expires this month? What would mm -hmm. your advice be on that one? 
So that's a this month. Okay, well, that's you know we're today's thirty out of thirty one, so that's pretty close. <laughs> that's I didn't even uh, consider the date of the month it is. So let's assume thirty days, maybe. Hopefully, it's not tomorrow that it expires. So if you take your five days of training or two day, three day, however many days to get the credits. We do, we'll, we'll put, when we're in class, we'll put in the application. I'll usually walk through it with my students on a Friday. It takes a couple days for the verification to kick in and for them to verify the learning partner you took the training. It takes a little day or so for the credits to hit your account and then another day or so, a couple days for that to actually kick in and renew your service. There, uh, if we, if, Cisco can see that you took the training before your cert was going to expire, then they can work with that to, if the deadlines don't match up exactly, there's some leeway where they don't want you to rely on this. They want you to take your training before and get your credits before it actually expires. But if you get your training in before it expires and then it's just all still processing, then yes, they can go in and they, there's some leeway for that. But if it's uh, if you're not going to take the training until after the certs have expired, well, at that point, it's too late. Yeah, if you've gone past the time. So there's a couple more. I'll, so I'll, I'll throw them your way as you go in. So there was one in here that said, OK, if uh, where to go. So to renew my CCNA, Encore and CL Core, Will it suffice to only take the implementing Cisco Advanced Call Control and Mobility Services? So the CLA CCM. So That's it, it, reading this, let's assume he's got professional level certification. There's a concentration in there. Is just the CLA CCM sufficient to renew all of those certifications? So let's. Uh... <clears throat> Now, when you say only take, let me clarify that. Is that take the exam or just take the training? I see a question from John there. Yeah, so the, the question doesn't specify. Um, let's assume training, because we're talking about CE credits, right? And if if they, sure. they specify, I'll let you know. Training, yeah, so, you just tried it. Just the training. So let's go, let's back to ce.cisco.com. So on that site, in the catalog, I ran a search for that call advanced control mobility. That course, however you take it, that is a 40 credit course. So 40 credits, that's enough to renew an associate level cert. It's enough to renew a specialist, uh, but not a professional. So we said it was EN Core, CCNA, and what was the other CL Core. CL Core. So two core exams. Yeah, two core exams and a CCNA. So it, on its own, I think it would renew the associate, but you would need a little bit more to get the, the professional, right? Well, it's, let, let's take a look here. That's a good good differentiation. So CCNP Enterprise, CCNP Collaboration, those are professional level certs. Those are EDD credits. But the core course by itself, Enterprise Core, CL Core, those are specialist level. So those specialists, those only take 40 credits. Ah, so that's a good point. Yeah, that one course, 40 credits, yeah, that would be enough. Your CCNA, your EN core, the other core, that would be enough. Now, it wouldn't be enough for a professional level, the full CCMP enterprise, CCMP collaboration, but all your specialist certs, yeah, that one course would do it. Cool. All right, I'm I'm going through trying to catch the questions that are in here as it goes in. So no, this, one this from, is great. This is wonderful. Yeah. Oh, here's here's one. Do you have a recommendation for a 30 hour course you would recommend from Gonzalo? He's trying to figure out what he should take in the next 30 days. Uh, something in the next 30 days. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's it. <laughs> There's so many options, and you have to look at well, when are those courses running? Uh, There's so many so many good ones. Uh, do you have any particular areas you're interested in? Any particular technology areas? Actually, that's a, so I'm, I'm trying to listen to you and go through and, and hit the questions as well. That's that's one of the things that excites me the most about the CE process now is that question you just asked, Andrew. Is 
it gives you an opportunity, it gives candidates the opportunity to learn something new and not just go back to the same thing that's there. Um, and so that's a great question to ask, Gonzalez. What are you interested in? Mm -hmm. Are you interested in SD-WAN? Are you interested in collaboration? Have you never done anything voice related? Well, maybe go do something voice, learn the basics of it and kind of pick up some credits. So it's a great question to ask. I've had a number of folks in security and Wi-Fi and voice just for fun. They've got some Cisco learning credits, which are going to expire. So they want to spend those. They want to get some continuing education credits just for fun. They've taken the cyber out, the cybersecurity training because a little attack and defense. They want to see, you know, how is that different? That's a really, I think that's a fun course to take uh, in addition to be in, being interesting as, uh, you know, techni technically interesting, but it's a different mentality, different aspect of networking than we get from traditional route switch or making phones work. You know, attack and defense is always, always a little fun. Uh, I did see a question earlier about uh, retired specialist certs and that they're active only under the partner area. Um, did that question get answered from Bill? It, no, I've seen it. I keep trying to get back to it and go through. I guess so, so the short answer there is I don't know the details on that one specifically, but I can certainly go back to our team and look at that because um, I know that there are some differences on, on what shows up in some of the different portals. We certainly don't want to have different different answers, right, related to candidates or related to certified individuals, depending on which portal they're looking at. So I can say from my own experience, I've had the classic CCMP route switch, so the old route switch, T-shoot, really, a really fun course to teach. Uh, sorry, small tangent there. The T-shoot course was five days straight of troubleshoot. It was a wonderful course. Uh, but so I had that old CCMP route switch, and on my portal, I could see CCMP route switch. Well, that was converted to the new CCMP Enterprise. And oh, yeah, on my side, uh, all my continuing education, all my exam, it couldn't renew that, that cert because it was being sunsetted, it was being, uh, it was being taken out. But that's still referenced. We, yeah, we still see that on some of the partner portals because that's still used internally for like uh, which courses instructors are allowed to deliver. And we still reference old certs for grandfathering that in. So that yeah there's nothing nothing about that yet um that's more via yeah, back end internal use the ce.cisco.com portal is more for just the the generic everyone cisco certified uh not not any of the more specific uses can I, okay let's see yeah, I'm skimming through trying to see what can I know. Can I know the valid? Oh, it says, it says, I know the valid CE is I have already renewed my certification, but I'm not sure how many remain on my profile. So if someone earns extras, like they earn more CE credits than they need to recertify, how can they verify how many may be left for later recertifications if needed? Any ideas on that one? Uh, no, you should see on your ce.cisco.com, you should see on your dashboard there all your items that are still valid and when they expire. Uh, and yeah, so if they're still on the profile there, they should still be valid. They, they, should, they haven't fallen off, they haven't expired. So logging, if you wanna go log into your portal now, that's ce.cisco.com under the my items section, you should see all your courses, all your credits that are there, and how long they uh, how long they're valid for. Okay. Um, yeah, I would agree with that one. I think they should show up. That's in there. Um, yeah. One of the uh, the questions came through on here was I'm trying to find it again in the list, but it was Are there any free activities to earn credits that go in? Um, so I, I don't know what your, your, your answer on this one is, but I can certainly say if you look at the eligible training list on the one of the pages that Andrew was showing, you'll see the ones that are that are obviously eligible. So the instructor led classes, the digital classes, attending sessions at Cisco Live. There's some workshops and boot camps that are put out that can offer CE credits. And then there are occasionally uh, webinars and other um other materials that I know we put out in Cisco Learning that we try to offer CE credits for. 
Um, but those those are those are announced as they come up and went, go through. So there's not an easy place that I would point you to to find those. Um, the, those those types of events are less regular, and they're kind of a, a special event that might go in. Um, I know when we launched the, we recently launched some automation bootcamp offers, and at first those weren't CE eligible, and then we started adding them in. And so it's really, it's if you see a piece of training uh, advertised, if it's eligible for CE credits, it will say it as part of the training someplace on that side. That's the easiest way to go through um, on that one. Uh, Frank, I see your question there as a partner. Um, uh, are you a learn? If you're a learning partner, I will also say that um, learning partners, especially instructors, we can take the training through the CCSI, the Cisco Certified System Instructor, through the CCSI portals, and that can qualify for us as instructors to learn to earn credits, and we we can do that for free. But that's a resource that's only available for instructors, not just for not even just for other partners. So yeah, I like Hanks, go ahead. Oh, I, I thought you were done with that. I'm finish up and then I'll go to the next question I, I see over here I wanted to answer. Oh, I'm good. No, that was it. Yeah, so so George asked, is there a time frame that CLCs typically expire? So I wanna answer this one live because this is one of those kind of confusing, potentially confusing ones that go through. So CLCs or Cisco learning credits, and then there are CEs, which we're mostly talking about today, which are continuing education credits. They both have credits in them. They both relate to learning so that they often can get confused. So I want to make sure I answer this so George kind of gets what's in there. If you really mean the CLCs, the learning credits, which can be used to purchase training like an instructor-led class or attend something like that, those expire a year from a kind of issue date on that. But if you if you meant to ask about CE credits, the continuing education credits, those are good for, I've been answering that one a few times, I think up to, um, where did it, where did I reply last? Up to three years from the date that it was completed. And so CE credits can be used for up to three years. CLC credits are just one year on that side. So hopefully that, that answers and, and is clear on that one. Uh, Bill, I see your example there for the, uh, yeah, the, the, the Unified Contact Center uh, Enterprise Specialization. Yeah, when when starting in 2020, when everything is getting reorganized, um, there are still some certs out there that are, yeah, still, you can still get that cert, but it's not, but it's, you know, being retired or it's going to be retired by the, by the end of this year or in a couple months. Though, in those kind of situations, uh, just going to be honest that's where we've got different groups all working not exactly the same base and so you're going to see yeah some certs still being referenced they haven't been updated to the new certs yet and so i would say if it's something that's being required i would but it's being a cert is required but being retired i'd reach out to your uh, contact at cisco the partner whoever is requiring that cert and ask, all right, well, what's the new one? What is it turning into? What course, what exam should I focus on? What's the new one? Or is the, is the old one gonna be extended? And uh, I would reach out and see what their plans are. But yeah, I've seen that a couple of times with, um, even with just training, because uh, again, I have the old certs teach the courses where I've got the old certs, but they want me to have the new certs. And you, it just, it's a phone call to Cisco. You say, all right, well, wh which one do you want me to get? What, which one do you want to use moving forward? Yeah. Um, I'm trying to flip through to see if I've got another question for you to, to kind of toss at you. Uh, Allie, I see your message about the, uh, the CCNA exams. I get uh, one of the, for the, there was a question about the free online training and practice exams. A discount. Uh, I don't have any resources for free online training, but I do like to recommend if you need a uh, practice test, there's two of them that I like to recommend. Let me bring these up. <clears throat> Uh, the first one, uh, I'll put, I'll message this to you here, and let me, uh, 
Where is that? Too many links for too many courses. The, the other thing, I'll, I'll take an opportunity to do a bit of a shameless plug for the Cisco Learning Network, which is the online community for folks trying to earn certifications and go through on that. Um, we, we do our best to try to um, provide links to good training material, references, webinar types of events, um, as well as kind of post, uh, I think there's some practice questions for, for several of the exams that are there. And then the forums are really my favorite part of the Cisco Learning Network, is if you're studying for something, it's a great place to kind of go in, ask questions, uh, work with other people studying for the same certification. And we have a whole community of, of folks across the world, both inside of Cisco from training partners like Sunset, from just regular uh, engineers that are out there that are passionate about learning. And so if you're studying for your CCNA for the first time and you haven't kind of uh, signed into and kind of set up a profile on the learning network, I would highly recommend taking a look there because you can find lots of other materials to help you as you're doing your preparation. All right. Gotcha. Let's see what other questions we've got here. Um, I just messaged, uh, I think I think it was, you can publicly see the Q&A answer, some of them, right? Um, there was a question about CCNA practice. Um, I said the two I like to recommend in class is uh, Boson. Boson has their CCNA practice uh, simulator. I've, uh, I like that one. It's got a study mode that it, it doesn't just give you a practice test. It gives you, once you attempt the answers, gives you why those were the wrong or right answers. Um, and then there's the official cert guide from Cisco, where the official cert guide, great book, a lot of good information there. If you've taken the training, it's similar to the student guide, but what comes bundled with that official cert guide are practice tests, uh, the Pearson Review style practice tests. So those are, uh, those are the two resources I like to recommend for CCNA tests. Yeah, Bill, I'm going, I'm going, Bill, I love your question, Bill. I'm, I'm digging deeper into this one. So it looks like the announcement from Cisco. Uh, where did it go? They, uh, they announced it on January 30th and they've got the, uh, the, the new, the hybrid certs that are coming out. Uh, it looks like that the uh, the new the the thing to do is to go for the new certs um, instead of worrying about the old ones. Yeah, there's an 18 month transition timeline. That's pretty cool. 18 months to move over, and there's there's some overlap in some of that training and certifications. Not entirely, um, but in order to make sure that it's not interrupted. Yeah, I would just go for the new certs, but not the ones that are being uh, taken out. Yeah, I mean, and I'll echo that a little bit. It's one of the conversations we have a lot inside of learning and in certifications related to our certification strategies. Um, we constantly, our focus is to make sure that the certifications that we're offering are relevant for folks doing jobs today and then kind of looking ahead to the types of changes that are coming in the technology. And so as, as things like, as an example, in the collaboration space are moving from on-prem to the cloud types of based solutions, there's been a lot of work being done in that space to make sure that the certifications are relevant for the engineers that are kind of moving in that direction. However, we all know not everybody kind of moves, technology in organizations doesn't always move kind of at that same pace, potentially, that, that new features are coming out. And so sometimes you may still be working on technology that is, is some of the older models and pieces that are there that are being kind of pulled out of some of the certifications. Um, to some extent, it's kind of a balancing act, right? We've got, it's, it's, you've, we've got to continue to kind of move in the forward direction, um, but hopefully without leaving too many of the stuff behind that's on that. Um, but we do, we do uh, our focus is to make sure that the certifications continue to be relevant for job seekers moving forward. Okay, I'll answer uh, Speed's question there about renewing his CCNA. There's also, and uh, there's another question in here on recommendations for CCNA, 
CCNP collaboration study resources, uh, something hands-on related. Um, I'm not a C I, of all of the technology spaces, collaboration and voice and video is one of the areas I never got into. So I, I don't know if that's one of your your specialists there, Andrew. Maybe you've got some suggestions. So that so funny funny enough, that is the one area I don't get into. I do uh, I do route switch, Wi-Fi security, SD WAN. I do everything else. Um, I just, I respect collaboration, but it's a completely different world <laughs> in the world of networking. Yeah, um, it's it's tough sometimes. You, I mean, there. I, I've always loved being very broad. When I first earned, when I re-earned my CCNA, I actually went through. It was back when we had CCNA wireless and CCNA security, and like there were all the different CCNAs. And I went and earned like all of them because I wanted to kind of have them all. And then when I got to the collaboration one, I'd actually started working at Cisco at that point, and my boss had actually told me he was a collaboration guy and he's like, okay, you've gone broad, pretty broad. He's like, you don't have to keep going. Like it's at some point it makes sense to pick it, pick a direction and specialize. And so with that, with, with that advice, I, I was like, okay, I'll leave it to other engineers to figure out how to make phones ring. So. <laughs> it, it is gratifying when you go through the training and you, you, you dial and your phone rings. That's it's so helpful. Oh, I can imagine. I can imagine. It's like the, getting that first ping when you set up your first routing protocol. It's like, look, it worked from one end of the network to the end. Nice. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Diana commented, it really is its own world. That it is. I, every piece is to some extent its own area. All right. So we get that. Pump <laughs> under. Lots of, lots of collaboration uh, love coming in on the, the chat. Absolutely. That's why we have teams, so we don't have to make phone calls anymore. Oh. Sorry, did I say I, that? I, I, well, I mean, that's the other piece that's interesting is collaboration has changed for years. I mean, for a long time, it was making phones ring, and then it was, all right, well, phones, and then a little bit of video. Now it's gone so far that that it, I went months without actually like dialing a phone number for somebody. And to I was like, dude, can I even make phone calls for my endpoint anymore? Because I've got like a, a nice Cisco video endpoint on my desk here. I was like, does it even call real phones? And sure enough, it still does. But so many things are over video these days that it uh, you don't use that as much. All right. Looks like we are coming close to the end of our, our time block here. I think we've done a pretty decent job of trying to snag the questions as they've come in. Um, I'm looking to see if there's any any topics we really haven't covered. The other, uh, Diana, I'll put a link in the meeting chat as well. Here's also uh, from the Cisco community. Here's just a mm -hmm. brain dump of various blogs and videos, the knowledge base under the collaboration. I believe it's under the collaboration knowledge base. Um, I like to recommend this resource when I teach the identity services engine. There's usually just uh, the recordings from like Cisco Live or the knowledge base articles in there, and that's just all in the Cisco site. So I would check out check out that link. There's a lot of good info for the world of collaboration. And you actually you you reminded me of something else that I, I I realized that not everybody always knows is out there. So Cisco Live, right? We do we have multiple Cisco Lives every year. One in the U.S., one in Europe, uh, one in Asia Pacific. Um, and those are great events to go and sit and, and listen to training. But for years, Cisco has always made the recordings and the slides from the breakouts and a lot of the content available for free to anybody at CiscoLive.com in an on-demand catalog. And so if the attendees on our, our webinar today aren't familiar with that, I, I highly encourage head on over there. Um, it's it's there are there are thousands of hours of recorded videos from Cisco presenters talking about fundamentals of technologies all, all the way up to the latest and greatest innovations at, in these areas that are rapidly evolving like collaboration and security. Um, and so if you're looking for good training resources to go through to kind of supplement what you're getting from, from other sources, definitely check out CiscoLive.com. Nice. Um, one of my last questions here I see from uh, Jama there, if I take the 300-815 CLSCCM course and I already had CL core, will take me to CCMP collab. So let me share my screen out here. Um, with the change in 2020 of uh, with Cisco certification, so now we take one core and one concentration exam 
Uh, everyone takes the same core, but then you take your concentration and whatever technology, whatever tool you use or you find fascinating, it kind of melds your CCMP to you. Uh, and so if we go through here, I'll put this link in the meeting chat as well. This is for the CCMP collaboration. So you got your CL core, collaboration core, and there's the training, the exam for that. So you do your core. Um, and then what well, for your concentration? Yeah, 300, 815, that counts as a concentration. You can also do the collaboration cloud or click uh, the collaborations applications, but yep, that would count as a concentration. And so you pass both the core and the concentration, get your full CCMP collab. It doesn't matter what order. You can do the concentration first and the core, either one, as long as they are both done, get your CCMP collab. Yes. Let me put this, I'll put this link in the meeting chat for you to check out. Cool. Do, any other questions? Are we missing anybody? Oh, there. I should open the Q&A. There's a couple in there. <laughs> Keep them from coming through. There's another recommendation for a collaboration course for 30 or 60 credits. I don't know if you've got one there. Um, any ideas? I imagine it, you might not teach it, but is there, is there a peer on in Sunset that does the... Um, Collaboration pieces, is there a good solid collaboration core? I mean, I think there's gotta be, right? CL core, yes. let's see, CL, CL core 1.1. Yep, uh, so CL core is a 64 credit course. Most okay. of the core, security core, EN core, CL core, those are usually 64 credit courses. So yep. there you go. Yeah, I just looked it up in the item catalog on the CE, and yeah, sixty-four credits, um, and the the one dot one looks to be the the uh, current version. So CL Core one dot one, I'll recommend that one back. Oops. All right. Let's see what anything else is coming in. Is the new expiration date based on when you complete the required continuing renewal based on current cert expiration date? So mm -hmm. it's based on your cert expiration date. So your cert expires at the end of three years from whenever you got it. So if, if you're accumulating continuing education credits, but you don't have enough by the end of that three years, your cert will still expire. So the, we, we so continuing education credits are, we think we're good there. they're good for three years. Uh, you've got the time to accumulate them. But yeah, the, the cert expiration date is from whatever day you pass your exam. That's when that three three year timer starts. That that's for the, just to clarify that too, because that was a slight change that happened. So the certification expiration date once you research is from whenever the recertification goes live. So it's it it, you're, it isn't always just a, a moving three years from your original certification date. It's <laughs> if you if you were to expire in twenty twenty two. Um, but you, or what, no, we're in 2023 now, right? So we'll stick with like current. So if your certifications are good until let's say January of 2024, but you recertify okay. in September of 2023, your your next expiration date is now based on September of 2023, which would put it September of 2026. And so it, right. it used, some of the certification expirations were kind of like pushed back based on your ori original cert date. Now it's based on the renewal date. So does that make sense? Me, Did I answer that clearly? <laughs> I, I misunderstood. That's my fault. Let me let me share my screen out here. So, um, yes, when you renew, when you're doing continuing education, when you update, um, let's go back to my, my catalog as an example. So I just did this. My continuing education kicked in on the 24th, just a couple of days ago. And so that extension occurred on the 24th of March. My expiration is now the 24th of March. And you can see all my certs have lined up. They are all gonna expire on the exact same day. So, sorry, I, I was thinking about the initial certification. Uh, so yes, when you renew, it's three years from that renewal date. Yes. That was, that's my yep. bad. No worries, no worries. Uh, there's a question in here I'm, I'm answering in the chat, but we can cover it as well. Is the DevNet Associate um, changing and what is the last date to test? There's there's no announced changes for the DevNet Associate. Now, um, our roadmap shows when it's going to be looked at and considered for changes. Um, and so you can always look at the roadmap site for certification updates to see what the dates are. 
And I'll look in just one second to see when the, the DevNet ones are up, because I don't know. It looks like they are uh, published exam updates for DevNet is set for Q2, so November to January 2024. So like the very end, like moving into 2024 is when we, we expect we potentially could see changes to the DevNet associate. And it's not guaranteed, right? We, what we do is we look at each one of the blueprints, see if any updates are needed. And then if so, we make changes. Yeah, I, uh, James, I see your question there about, or your answer there about the uh, 9-11, PSTN. Yes, there are, there are still requirements for voice. I acknowledge that. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. The E911 one, I, I had a, a coworker of mine that was helping a healthcare organization make some changes. And I, he spent, I think, months working on 911 details. So definitely still <laughs> hugely important. All right. I think uh, if we missed anybody, go and, uh, if you want to post your question up again, if we missed you in the, the flood there, anybody else? Good. Well, hey, thank you uh, everybody for, for joining. Thank you, Andrew, for letting me join you guys and kind of crash in on your webinar. It's always fun to kind of get out there and talk with folks about certifications and renewals. Well, thank you all for attending. Hope you all have a um, you know, wonderful week, almost weekend, and we'll uh, see you around. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe and click on the notification icon to get notified whenever we upload new content.